Hey guys, how's it going? Jazz Davis here. Today I've partnered with Adobe Students to make a little tutorial on how I create my glitch effect in Photoshop using certain smart filters and layer masks. There's really endless results you can get using this technique, so pretty excited to see what people might come up with. Let's get started. I hope it's easy to follow along, and if you come up with anything cool throughout the process, be sure to tag Adobe Students and I in it on Instagram. I go. Let's hop into Photoshop. As you can see here, I've opened up a photo I took in Abu Dhabi. And what we're going to do first is duplicate our locked background layer there by pressing Command J. I always duplicate the background just to have a layer on top that we can mess with and do whatever, but then we always have the original background image there. Next, we're going to convert that duplicated layer to a smart object by right clicking Convert to Smart Object. We do that because we're going to be working with filters, which we can now apply as smart filters and it allows us to go back and tweak them and rework them. So the main filter that we're going to be using to give us that glitch effect is the wave filter. You can find that by clicking filter, distort, and then going down to wave. And right off the bat, it brings up this little menu where there's all sorts of different sliders and options for you to select to rework your image. Your numbers in here are gonna be different than mine, I believe, off the start, but what you're gonna do is actually mirror these numbers for now. These were ones I came up with a while back that give a pretty good starting point to work with this effect and they are 9 for the number of generators, uh, 47 and then the max for the wavelength which is 999 and then amplitude is 1 and 25 and then the scale just keep at 100 horizontally and vertically. Now the main thing you want to reselect here is in the type you want to go down to square although it's always cool to play with the triangle and sign types but for this effect, we're gonna be working with square. Let's just press okay once you have done that. Our thumbnail preview looks pretty cool right here, and let's see it large. So yeah, it, you know, it honestly does, a those numbers are a really good starting point for this effect, and uh, yeah, it's, I know a lot of the preview images I showed were, um, people so it's cool just to see this work on landscape stuff and architecture every once in a while as well now one of the important things that i do with my images is kind of tone down the glitch effect a bit because obviously we wouldn't even be able to tell what this is entirely if we were to share this with someone so i do a lot of masking uh, with this smart filter and then just by using the brush tool and the black and white paint. Uh, many of you probably know how masks work, but black paint um, hides and then white paint will uh, reveal. So let's go ahead and, and mask some of this glitch effect out um, from our smart filter. What I like to do also is use the, the, um, the marquee tool here and just kind of do squares or rectangles and then drop the paint bucket by pressing G um, uh, just to erase bigger amounts at one time and even that is kind of cool and subtle I, li I like that you know maybe it's only one tower is glitched out or, or what have you this harsh sky is a little annoying to me so what I might do is use my brush on a soft uh, soft brush on this on the filter to you know mask some of this this out here um, or or sorry I'm going the wrong way actually I would go like I would add some of it back in the sky does not need to be harsh it can be soft I'm going pretty quick just for tutorial sake but I think you get the point and and honestly that's that's pretty much the the main meat of the tutorial that's that's the main bit just working with this wave filter and what's nice is we can just go right back into this smart filter and kind of just retweak it to some new numbers that we might like even more and uh, plug and play just for the sake of variety let's try a new image really quick I'm gonna open up 
a person this time to see just a bit of uh, different situations we can get ourselves into. So I'm uh, going to duplicate the background again, Command J for Apple users, and then convert it to a smart object. Let's go up here, filter, distort, wave. Um, my original generators from the last project are still in there, so there's you know 11, 47, we can change that back to 80, bring this to nine. Keep min and max amplitude around one and 29, that's fine. Uh, you know, it's really about just messing with the numbers and looking at your preview image there to see the different effect that you're getting. Let's try more on the wavelength. And let's crank up the generators to 15 for that. So I'm really, it's really just plug and play trying to get the effects that you might like. Okay, that came out pretty neat. I could see where that might be cool. And of course, we do have to go in and do some masking because we wouldn't just want to show this to someone. I don't think they would quite understand what we were trying to do. Um, subtlety is key, you know, as always. So let's go ahead. Um, this time I'm just going to use the brush tool for the sake of um, just getting a point across. Uh, let's make this painting this black to take away and reveal our background layer. I think I just want the right side of her body to be glitched out. This was a photo I took in Hong Kong uh, a year ago. Maybe it was two years ago now. Yeah, it's cool. I like when it takes away, kind of disappears. Yeah, like that, the glitching in the leg is sweet. Just subtle, subtle stuff is always good. This is maybe a bit of a weird photo to choose for this because it blends a lot with the background, but still pretty interesting, pretty cool. Um, yeah, go ahead and mess with this, apply it to your architecture, your landscapes, people, whatever, you know, I think the one of the main aspects of this that that really uh, helps this effect work is the masking, you know, and really aiming where you want the glitches to be and be seen and not overdoing it, of course. Well, thanks a lot for watching the tutorial. I hope you guys maybe learned something new from it. I'd definitely love to see any results you've gotten using this technique, so be sure to tag Adobe students and I in any edits you create with it. Peace!